Been quite a season for revenge action flicks so far. Monkey Man, very serious, very intense, and then whiplash into this far less serious story. And yet, weirdly enough, they're both directorial debuts and feature Charlotte Copley screaming into a crowd with a megaphone. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Boy Kills World. As mentioned, this is a directorial debut of German writer Moritz Moore and stars Bill Skarsgård as a deaf and mute vengeful child. When his family is murdered, he is trained by a mysterious shaman to repress his childhood's imagination and become an instrument of death. There is surprisingly a lot to unpack with this one and is a massive tale of two halves where I started out thinking that this wasn't going to really amount to all that much to leaving the theatre being thoroughly impressed and entertained. I think I'm going to make this the tagline of my review but this is just unapologetically fun. Bill Skarsgård's character doesn't speak, so he uses a voiceover in his head that he once heard from an arcade game. And that voiceover is done by H. John Benjamin, who is most noticeably the voice actor for Bob in Bob's Burgers, and of course, Archer. And funnily enough, this starts out to what I would feel like an Archer live action attempt at storytelling would be. It's aiming to be very silly and comedic, leaning heavy into the comic book style of transitions and camera work. I guess in a loose sense, maybe like a a Scott Pilgrim vs the world if it was a violent action thriller. <laughs> Story-wise, it's simple, just your bog standard revenge quest, but they spice it up with a unique main character as well as this strange, desensitised world where they live in, where these gruesome deaths are going on and it's almost normalised. Like, you have this, like, serial mascot sponsoring this purge event. <laughs> it's an 18 in the UK, R in the US, and it fully capitalises on that. And the jokes are in the same sense of an Archer episode, almost. The delivery of the snappy one-liners and the quick comebacks, all through Skarsgård's character talking to himself in his own head, self-narrating, and sometimes even just being the straight man. And that format doesn't always work. Our main character does. That Archer style comedy only works when it's being delivered by a professional voice actor such as H. John Benjamin. It doesn't work when being done by other characters in human voice and form. They instead come across like, well, kid cartoon characters or like a bad live action version of an anime adaptation. <laughs> These four characters in particular are doing that and it hurts the movie when they're doing so. But weirdly enough, they abandon that format as we get further into the story and it becomes more dramatic than and slapstick necessarily. It doesn't disappear, but that humour and characterization is used way more sparingly, which in turn makes it more funny. So it's a tale of two halves in terms of delivery and comedy, but also in the delivery of the action. We're definitely not short of great action scenes in Boy Kills World, and we're given a lot of creative choreography with entertaining music, environments and kills. But it was an absolute coin toss to see if a certain fight scene would be chopped up poorly in editing to where it was just too difficult to follow. And harbouring back to the two halves, the poor editing and the action took place more in the front half of the movie. Maybe we were spoilt by films like John Wick where everything is beautifully framed, but sometimes it just felt too choppy with some unnecessary sped up footage, which was taking away from that great idea and choreography that they had going on in front of them. But again, that improves as the film goes on, it's bizarre. The second half of the film just shifts massively in terms of tone and presentation, and it just really kicks up a gear. There's this kitchen fight in the second half, which I just absolutely loved. I've already mentioned those that don't really work in this film because their characters are just too cartoonish even for this and I'm gutted Charlotte Copley is on that list honestly but there are good characters that do work first and foremost is Bill Skarsgård to whom I think was a great choice for this he has a very expressive face which allows his body to mimic those expressive voice acting coming from H. John Benjamin and from an action perspective as well he's looking great although the deaf aspect of the character was a bit wishy-washy he's supposed to get by on reading lips but sometimes he would be following conversations when people are still turned away from him I wouldn't normally pick up on something like that but the movie makes a point to have it a bit in this film where he's struggling to read this guy's lips. It's a very funny scene, don't get me wrong, but then it reminds you that, oh, reading lips is important for him. Wait, he's not been doing that all of this movie? Jessica Roth is one of our more unique designed antagonists, and she's awesome here too. And again, she's more featured in that latter half of the film. And the same can be said for Yayan Ruhuan, who you might recognise if you've seen Raid 1 or 2. This guy is just prominent towards the end, but Jesus Christ, he makes the finale of this film so good. He is an insane martial artist and stunt performer, and he's just stealing the fight scene he's in. Lastly, just a shout out to the costume team who've done some great work with our main character outfits, making it feel very punk mixed with dystopian future. And the same can be said for the set designers too. The snowy wastelands of a serial mascot commercial is honestly not a battleground I had in mind for a gruesome slaughter fest, but it worked. Ah oh shit, I should probably wrap this up. It's not a long film, and if you're looking for the next action flick to 
scratch an itch, this is one I'd definitely recommend. Granted, it might be a bit too silly for some or too gruesome for others, but I think that's the charm of this and it differentiates it from the rest. Gruesome, interesting, and bottom line, just downright fun. What a great directorial debut. So that's Boy Kills World. Have you seen it yet? It came out last week. If so, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that stuff. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime and video games. Until next time guys, take care. Bye bye.